Does anyone else feel like they can relate to Bill Murray in the movie Groundhog Day? Like, did we just watch the Carolina game again? Ah, uh, wow. You have to get up. Do what they do. But that was insane. Let's not get out of ourselves. Come on! I make go records, baby! I'm liking this. Hello and welcome to another episode of Hawks Recap. My name is Clay. Thank you for tuning in. Blackhawks playing their 22nd game of the season, or at least we think it was their 22nd game because it seemed an awful lot like the 21st game of the year. Um, yeah, are we sure this wasn't a rerun? I know they said it was live, but I feel like I've seen it before. Blackhawks lose to the Lightning by a score of 3-2, to 4-2 to two with the empty netter. Pretty much the exact same as... The last game against Carolina. Are we sure this wasn't a rerun? Well, it seems like forever since the Blackhawks have last beaten the Tampa Bay Lightning. It seems like we can only beat them in a Stanley Cup final, and quite frankly, I'm not very optimistic about that scenario happening again anytime soon. So it might be a little bit of a rough stretch in the future here if the trend continues like it did tonight. Blackhawks down a forward, Kubalik not in the lineup, so the Blackhawks dressing 11 forwards, 7 defensemen, Corey Crawford in net for the Hawks. Corey Crawford was fantastic in this game, kept the Hawks in it. Tampa Bay, similar scenario, down a forward, no Nikita Kucherov, so they're dressing 11 forwards and 7 defensemen, and Curtis McElhaney in net for them, backup goalie, kind of like us in having Crawford as a backup, but we don't really have a backup. We kind of have two starters. Tampa has a backup, Curtis McElhaney, and we need to take advantage of it. We did not. We also should have taken advantage of the fact that Nikita Kucherov was out, and also Steven Stamkos only played a period in this game. He played the first period, and then he was just sitting on the bench for the final 40 minutes, and the Hawks did not take advantage of that. Just a straight-up missed opportunity for the Hawks in this one. This was essentially a carbon copy start for the Blackhawks, just like they started the game against the Hurricanes. And I would say the Hawks probably played better than they did in that game, but they just couldn't get anything going. Their passing was off. Their timing was off. I thought at times the Blackhawks were trying to make one too many passes instead of maybe just getting the puck to the net, especially with a backup goalie in net. But when you have all those combinations come together, obviously it's not going to work out very well. Tampa, they were relentless on the forecheck. Their compete level was higher than ours. They were winning puck battles a lot more than we were. It was a struggle in this game for the Hawks, especially in the first period. Corey Crawford did what he could to keep this uh, team in the game. The Hawks... 0 for 3 on the power play. Once again, they cannot score when they need to. I mean, that was pretty much the difference in this game, right? They score on the power play. This game is tied. We go into an overtime period, right? We get at least a point. But it doesn't happen. They don't score. They had a power play in the first. Don't score on it. And then the Lightning get a power play right after that. Uh, now, I will say I thought it was a pretty crappy call to give the Lightning the power play. I didn't think that was a penalty. But sometimes those calls happen. They just do. You got to fight it off. You got to fight off adversity. It's going to happen. Hawks, they don't do it well enough. Tampa Bay scores on the power play, making it 1-0 going into the second period. It's one thing to have a bad power play. Some teams can still win games without a good power play. Plenty of playoff teams have done that. Predators did that last year. Blues did that last year. You can do it. It's not unheard of. But when you have a terrible power play, 13.8% for the Hawks, fourth last in the NHL this year, but you can't make up for it with your five-on-five -five play, then you're doomed. You're straight up doomed. You're going to lose games. And that's how the Hawks lost this game. The power play, the special teams, was the difference in this game. The Hawks would start the second period on a power play. They would have another power play later on in the second period. Two prime opportunities to tie this game up. They don't take advantage. And it was like a broken record every single time. Cross-ice pass, picked off, cleared. Cross-ice pass, picked off, cleared. Like, try something else. Go down low with it. Try for a slot tip. I don't know. Just something else. Because right now, Tampa Bay has that cross-ice pass just sniffed out. It's not going to happen in this game. That was their strategy. Take away that pass. Don't just say, oh, I can get it through with a little bit of sauce. No. It's not going to happen. Not against the Lightning. 
They have a lot of skilled players on their team. They have just freaking sticks everywhere. They can knock down pucks like none other. It's nuts. They're very talented. I'm pissed off about it. But still, just try something else. It's just insane. I don't care who you put out on that power play. We have enough talent to be able to make a power play work. And it's just not working. Despite having two power plays in that second period, the Hawks get outshot 10-8. Now, that's very close in shots. I get it. It's not that big of a margin. But still, when you have two power plays and the other team does not have Nikita Kucherov and doesn't have Steven Stamkos because he didn't play after the first period in this game, you should be out shooting the other team in that period. It's just inexcusable. Thankfully, Crawford made some really huge saves when he needed to and kept this team in it and kept this game 1-0 going into the third. The good news for Corey Crawford and us is the fact that his stellar play was rewarded eight and a half minutes into the third period where Brent Seabrook on Brent Seabrook bobblehead day decided to take matters into his own hand. He said, hey kids, I'll show you how it's done. The defenseman goes low into the offensive zone below the goal line and decides to shoot the puck at McElhaney's shoulders. Great strategy. Banks into the back of the net and we have a tie game. Sometimes in games like these where you're passing just isn't really working out all that great. You just got to find ways to get the puck to the net from wherever, whatever angle. doesn't really matter. Shoot for a rebound, get a dirty goal, just get something because the pretty plays aren't working. Well, Seabrook does that here. Hawks reap the benefits for about a minute. Lightning come down, offensive zone time, win some puck battles. Hedman gets the puck at the point. He puts it on net. It gets tipped right in front of Crawford, gets by him, trickles into the back of the net. Lightning restore their one goal lead. That was deflating. Now it looks like Olimata kind of got high sticked during that play, right when that offensive chance was developing. That was unfortunate. Uh, created some space for the Lightning, but sometimes missed calls happen. Refs may not have seen it. They can't call what they don't see. They're human. Oh well. A couple minutes after that, the Hawks turn the puck over in the neutral zone, creating a two-on-one opportunity for the Lightning, and it's a tap-in goal for Braden Point, making it 3-1 Lightning. And if that other goal was deflating, well, this one just straight up sucked. With a little under three minutes left to go in the game, Blackhawks would pull Crawford to get the six skater on the ice, and the Blackhawks... Do a great thing. They just get the puck to the net. There's a rebound. Strom is there to clean it up, put it into the back of the net. They make it a one-goal game. It's 3-2 Lightning now. Hawks have a chance with the empty net still. And unfortunately, Lightning take advantage of that empty net. Paquette scores it, icing this game, making it 4-2. The exact same score as our previous game. Ugh. Bill Murray, I know how you feel. So yeah, disappointing result for the Hawks, second straight loss. It was a better effort than the Carolina game, although you'd expect that since it wasn't like they were on the back end of a back-to-back -back like they were against Carolina. The passing just was off, the timing was off, seemed like they were just fighting the puck the entire game. Lightning uh, did a great job with their sticks, getting in passing lanes. They had 41 hits. That was basically their four check. They made it tough for the Hawks, but the Hawks certainly didn't help themselves. And, well, it would have been nice if the Hawks could actually take advantage of a power play. Now, of course, losing two straight games is not good. But they were two games, two losses against Eastern Conference opponents. The Hawks now play five games against Central Division rivals. They got two games against the Stars, two games against the Avalanche, and then a game against the Blues. If the Hawks can get a majority of wins in those games, a majority of the points in those games, that will make these two losses really feel pretty irrelevant. Games against your division are a lot more important. Let's take advantage of these. Thank you so much for watching this episode of Hawks Recap. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments section below. Like, share, and subscribe. I appreciate that as always. But most importantly, as always, stay safe, make good decisions, and I'll see you next time.